All right, guys. So today we are gonna look at the blue post. If you've been, if you haven't seen it already, there was a post that happened uh, a couple hours back. We've been digesting. There's a lot of stuff in here I wanted to talk about. After we go over this, we'll also go over the changes that happened last night. It's actually a massive build of changes, so we'll talk about that right after this. But I kind of want to go over this in a bit more detail and just kind of give my thoughts on uh, what Wraith is saying here. Um, I'm not sure if... I'm assuming Wraith is just someone else working on priests. Uh, this is different than the person that was uh, talking before, so not sure. Kind of reinforces what I was saying earlier or what I was thinking is that there are multiple people working on the spec. So let's kind of dive right into it. A lot of this is going to be kind of rehash what I've already told in the, the Max, the talk I did with Max earlier, but try to go into a bit more detail than I didn't before that. So uh, first off, you know, I don't agree with a good chunk of what's in here, but I what I said earlier was, all, was still true. I'm happy that they're saying something. This is always better than saying nothing. So, I'm, and a lot of this was stuff that we kind of all thought in the back of our heads. They're kind of just putting at in a post now, um, which I think is fine, right? At least we know where they stand. So that's good. I don't agree with it, but I'm, I'm happy we, we have something. Uh, okay, so first things first, number of active spells. Saying, we agree, priests have too many active spells. While we think there will be more to assess in the, as the expansion plays out, the first spell that comes to mind is Shadow Mend. Feeling unnecessary with Flash being available to all priests. I definitely see what they're saying to some degree, although I I don't know. I, I always thought that was kind of weird. That's why like I didn't mind not having Flash Shield in Shadowlands, even though they said I think they were going to bring it back. But we'll see where they want to go with this. I actually don't super mind Shadow Mend right now, but yeah, I mean, I guess we'll see where this comes into. Um, they did mention losing the secondary heal lockout is annoying. Obviously, I don't really care about that, but it makes sense. Uh, they did kind of specifically call out mind games, power word life as contributing to the number of active spells for priests. What this is probably saying is that, you know, active rotational abilities from the class tree are probably going to go away. Um, or at least that's what they're considering. I don't actually think this is a bad idea considering, you know, you're going to have active spells in the spec tree and, you know, like for shadow priest, like removing Shadow Crash, Damnation, Void Torrent, some of those active abilities. Like that's a bit more polarizing than some of the class ones. Like I'm not sure how many people feel that crazy about mind games, you know? Although, you know, I don't mind. I think mind games is kind of fun, but I, I totally get why people don't enjoy it as much. So yeah, I'm glad they're at least looking at this. This is the biggest part in the post that I agree with. So we'll see what they want to do. Um, I'll be honest. I would not be surprised if they cut out Divine Star and Halo. I think that's probably the, the thing that's probably most likely to see from this. Divine Star and Halo are effectively button bloat. They don't interact with the rotation at all. They're just something that you press every X seconds. Um, the mind games talents do somewhat like you do it. Like there are three mind games talents, which is why I'm a little bit less sure that they get rid of that, even though they did call it out. Um, so, so yeah. Yeah, and again, the only reason I'm saying that maybe not mind games is because they added the talent that, like, is it, like, what, mind blast and mind spikes reduce its cooldown? So there is some synergy there. Halo and Divine Star are way more kind of just blah buttons. Um, but I don't know. We'll see what they want to look at. I think this is this is a hard problem, especially as they want to they wanna add more stuff. I could see them removing Divine Star Halo a bit easier, um, which I don't... I'm kind of torn with, right, because they're cool-looking spells. Or at least Halo is for sure, um, but yeah, we'll see. We'll see what they want to do. This is this is something that I will say that I have not given a whole lot of feedback on. Like, like I've been complaining about button bloat and having a lot of active spells. I haven't been giving as many specific examples of things that we could get rid of. Um, so we'll see. Don't you dare. Yeah, I'm just I, I'm here to cause problems for people. That's my main goal. All right, moving on to the class tree. So overall, we feel the class tree is in a good spot. As mentioned above, there are too many active spells, and we're looking to pull back on that. Yep. For Shadow of the Class Tree is shaped out well. Generally speaking, I agree with this. Uh, we're less happy about how many nodes can feel mandatory for Holy and Discipline. Yeah, I, you know, uh, wow, Dragon. I definitely can't speak as much on the Holy and Disc side, but, you know, I think, barring a couple things that I'm not the happiest with, I think I'm overall fine with it. Um, 
So I think that's fair. I think, so what would I change? A lot of the stuff was already put in my post. Um, so kind of coming, I don't really like Shadow Fiend. I, I wish Shadow Fiend would just go away, honestly. If you're talking about button bloat, I just remove it from the game entirely. Um, I don't need it. Uh, uh, that would be my first suggestion. I think Mindbender is infinitely better, and that's not even saying much. I would be fine of not having a baseline pet and only getting one if you talent into uh, Mindbender. Uh, obviously, that screws up Shot of Flame Prism, but uh, then you can just move Idol if you charge somewhere else. So the only way to get to Shot of Flame Prism is with Mindbender. Um, anyways, that's that's kind of point number one. Um, they could, I mean, I don't really mind the dispels. Uh, one of the biggest things they did bring this up in the post. We'll get to in a second. Is getting Vault of the Heavens back. Um, would love to see that. Body and Soul and Angelic Feather is kind of contributing to the button blo bloat a little bit. Um, a lot of people are just going to macro the crap out of these two together, which is kind of annoying. Like, most Shadow players are going to have a macro that's like, it by default presses Power Word Shield and you can have like a shift modifier to press Feather. Like, to a lot of players, it's going to be the same freaking thing. Um, they both give the same amount of movement. Obviously, one comes with the shield. Um, one lasts five seconds, the other one lasts three seconds. It's like... You're kind of splitting hairs. I really don't know why we have both. It just kind of kind of feels weird to me. Um, they talk about getting rid of Shadowman. Yeah, we'll see what they want to do with that. I actually don't mind. I think like the Shadowman, Masochism, Death of Shadows. I actually like that as like a kind of two-point thing. I will say, if, if kind of continuing on, I don't mind Shackle being here. Leap of Faith is fine. Um, I really dislike this choice node. So Sheer Terror in general. I've never been a fan of Psychic Scream. You know, fearing mobs in a, like a PVE sense is hardly useful, um, at least in my experience. So I don't really care about anything that's buffing or related to fear-related mechanics. Although I understand that that's a that's something very different for PVP. So I, I would love to see this change with mind bomb stun, spectral guys. You know, we listed off a couple of different things. They did cover a lot of that in the post, so we'll get to that in a bit. Um, Void Tendrils, still kind of a disappointing button. I think I'd rather have it be a targeted thing and not something that comes out of myself. Or, like, be in range, I guess, or whatever. Okay, moving on. Death and Madness, I think, should get reworked or, uh, reverted. I like the old version better. Uh, Mind Control, Dominate Mind. I think this is a fine choice now. That's basically what it was before. They're just changing points around a little bit. They added Tithe Evasion into the class tree. This is great. This is awesome. Um, at least we don't have to pick up, like, you can now reasonably get this without feeling like you're losing out on damage, which is still a problem in the spec tree. So glad they moved that there. Um, yeah, they could do some stuff with improved shackle, things like that. But, you know, in general, you know, there's not a whole lot on this tree that you feel like you need to get, which is still one of the, the pluses, I think, from like a Shadow Priest perspective. Putting Phantasm up here is fine. Okay, fade, remove, snare effects, more relevant for people that don't have dispersion, so not sure how much we'll take this, but I guess the main thing is not picking up dispersion <laughs> will feel not as bad because you can get this here. Um, yeah, so happy with that. We'll definitely pick up Tide Evasion, get, get our Power Infusion Twins, Twist of Fate crap that we have to pick up. Uh, again, not the, not the biggest fan of this stuff over here, but, you know, it is what it is. Still not super enticed to go down this kind of left side. That's one of my if they could change stuff, it'd be that. And I think that's kind of what they're talking about. Like, these buttons maybe feel too good for Disc and Holy, and they feel like they kind of have to pick them. And at the same time, they don't feel like they're worth going down here as Shadow. So they might be able to kill two birds with one stone. Because um, in here, they do mention, um, you know, they're less happy about the mandatory notes for Holy and Disc. So maybe we'll see some improvement over there. Uh, Void Shield, uh, probably not going to be super relevant. Vamp Embrace still feels kind of weak or just worse than what other people can bring. So not super psyched about that. Uh, they did move Throws of Pain down here. Just fine. Just like a little bit of a pathing change. And then made it a two-pointer. This thing actually cranks, by the way. I logged a couple of my, my dungeons on beta. So much of your insanity is coming from uh, Maddening Touch and then Throws of Pain in dungeons. This is actually an insane amount of insanity in AoE. So... Yeah, I'm glad this is staying. This is so much damage, I think. Um, and without this, it feels really weird. It'll feel bad on AoE, I think. Um, now, how much of that insanity you're actually using and not, and not wasting is a different conversation. But, yeah, overall, happy this is staying. Um, 
and as you can see, I still have lots of room to like pick other things uh, before we kind of get down into the the bottom section. Uh, apathy, kind of what I was saying before, Mind Blast will slow your target for four seconds when it crits. Obviously, this does have synergy with with like Mind Spike generating um, your next Mind Blast to crit. Like that that does have synergy, but I think again, you know, having a slow attach to Mind Blast that's only four seconds on one target, I'm not. I'm not sure how how good this is, honestly. Um, I, I don't I don't know like when you care about this in PVE. Um, so yeah, kind of weird. Um, yeah, even though your mind blast is critting a lot, do I really care? Like I I don't know. I mean, I guess seventy five percent is kind of a lot. It maybe kind of feels like a stun, but I don't know. I'm not I'm not psyched about this. If it worked with Psychic Link, eh, maybe it's more useful. Maybe. But even then, it's it's. Uh, I think there are that are better utility options that I'd rather have. And this is kind of what I was saying in my post. Like this is where like, you know, picking up other things like, you know, literally, you know, spectral guys, shining force, uh, mind bomb stunned version. You know, I'll I'll, I'll take any of those. A kick, <laughs> you know, like I don't know. I'm not not the biggest fan of this. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. They sound like they're gonna get rid of Shadowman, but that's. So that's this. And then we, we still have to dump something else. Masochism. Cool. And now we're into the bottom section. Um, this really hasn't changed very much, although they did revert the nerf on translucent image. So this is now a full 10% DR, which is good. And then we're still going to kind of come in here with our mind games and stuff. Um, pick up Divine Star. And, you know, you can kind of pick and choose what you care about here. You know, probably something like that. Who knows? Um... Maybe you go back up here, pick up some other stuff, get a, get a mask to spell, get your shackles. We have room to play around with. I think overall the class tree is fine. Like it, it does have some things I want to get better, but you know we have bigger fish to fry. <laughs> it's kind of the way I look at it. It is somewhat lacking of like, oh crap, that's awesome stuff. I think because twins is here. Um, but yeah. So going back to the post, I'm gonna skip over the discipline, holy, and shadow stuff specifically. I'm not going to come back to that in a second. So let's talk about, they add specific points on here on the various utility things that I was just suggesting that we would like to see in the class tree. Um, so we'll go through this next. First up, silence. Um, they, they literally said, we are not adding silence in the priest class tree. Holy crap, they, they did it. This, I mean, this is what we were all thinking, because they haven't done it yet. And holding a disc are the only two specs in the game right now that can't get a kick, which is absolutely unequivocally just wrong. Um, th they're basically saying having access to interrupt we don't think is necessary for all specializations, but they have literally given it to all specializations but two. It makes absolutely no sense. I think they literally just shot themselves in the foot by saying this. I understand what they're saying, but I just wholeheartedly disagree with it. I understand when they're saying silence specifically in terms of locking you out of something for the four seconds or whatever it is in PvP, it might be reduced. I get that that's very valuable control. Um, I, however, think it's a very reasonable ask to put a baseline interrupt somewhere up in the class tree that's just shadow word interrupt, call it something cool. That's just a 24 second cooldown kick. That's it. And then maybe as a shadow priest, that button actually transforms to just being silence. Or maybe you just put silence in the spec tree. Like, I don't care, right? Um, I see no reason why be... Like, this is... You can kill so many birds with this one stone because a big complaint that shadow priests have is we just want a 24-second kick to do a normal kick rotation on all these interrupts in, like, Mythic Plus or whatever, you know? Having the actual silence mechanic is far less useful in mythic plus and it's far less useful in in raids um so yeah big disagree with this i don't play holding disc very much or at least i don't want to be um but i think that they, they, i want this for shadow too because the other problem is that having silence in our tree means inherently you have to give up damage to prick to pick this now if they reverted the fact that every healer has a kick then maybe this is fine, but I don't think they're going to do that. So, big, big not a fan. 
I mean, the, the biggest problem is that PvEers look at silence as an interrupt. PvPers look at it as a silence, you know? And I think those are very different things. They do different things in the game, you know? And I think it's just... The, the problem is, like, so many PvE things don't give a crap if you silence them. It just doesn't do anything. Um, the most relevant example of one that has been useful has been Anduin ads. Um, if you guys did Anduin, the ads do... Oh, they kept nerfing it into the ground. Every time you kill... There's like four ads that spawn. Every time you kill one, the remaining ads cast faster. Um, now, that's kind of a problem because you can kind of cycle through your kicks more than you would like to. It can also be stunned and CC'd by other ways. Um, but one of the advantages that Silence had in that case, you could silence the interrupt and then you like didn't have to kick for four seconds. Um, and, it, and it kind of acted like it was a stun for that mob on four seconds. Um, so like there are some things where it's nice, but almost overwhelming majority of times, not, not a thing. Yeah, every healer, every cla every spec in the game has a hard kick besides holy and disc. So in the in so if we look at so someone asked about Luna asked about druids. So skull bash is right there. Obviously it's 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 in the middle of the tree, so it's not like it's like super easy to get, but it's right there if you if you need it. Um and the cool slash crazy thing, if you're balanced druid, solar beam is in here, you are giving up damage to pick it, but you kind of have to to get down to the, into the section anyways. You can have Solar Beam and Skull Bash should you need it. Um, it, it exists, right? It's not it's not free, but it's there. Um, uh, let's see, Holy Paladin's Rebuke is up there. Actually pretty easy to get to, all things considered. Uh, let's go to Mistweaver. Spearhand Strike. Uh, who else didn't have one? Um, I will I will point this out. So Evoker kind of has what we want in the sense that uh, where is it? So there's Quell. It's right here. It's actually pretty long. It's um. This is kind of the problem. Like they they effectively have the silence thing, right? So th this is forty second cooldown, twenty five yard range. I mean, this is just the worst version of silence, right? Um, but it's there. Um, and then there are so every Evoker can get that, and then. I think is it is it just devastation that can uh, buff it? So yeah, they reduce the cooldown by twenty seconds. So they have a twenty second silence if they want it. I don't know. I don't. I don't quite get the reasoning on this. Um, I didn't even realize that evokers was a silence. Like evokers literally get a twenty second silence, and they they're like really upset that priest can get a kick. Um, so yeah, um, pretty sad. Not not something I like to see. That definitely feels like they're just not taking into account the PvE implications of this. Okay, Vault of the Heavens. This is something I personally have never played with. Um, obviously, I like I play tested like the, the legendary in Shadowlands and had some fun with it. Um, this was like super bugged, but like I, I don't get. I, you know, I understand why they don't want to add this, but it just sounds so cool. Like, and I said this on Max's stream. We'll go over this in a second, but they said. This was discussed early on with this iteration, with the intent to add it as a choice against Leap of Faith. So it sounds like they also thought of the same thing, but they considered it's almost always more useful than Leap of Faith. F sure, but Leap of Faith is one of the most fun interactions in WoW. I don't think these two statements contradict each other. They're basically saying you would take Vault... If you don't know what this is, sorry. It, uh, it's reverse Leap of Faith, so you jump to a target, you leap to a target, rather than you pulling them. Um, which agreed in a PVE scenario, you're almost always going to want to take the one where you leap to someone else. Like that's just more commonly probably what you want, but it's a choice if you want it. And I think the fact that it's a fun interaction and wow, should mean that's exactly why you wanted to make a choice because it's a, something you'd want to choose if you have one or the other. So I don't, I don't get that at all. I, if we allow for choice, the choice is clear, or we'd have to nerf Vault of the Heavens down. No, I, I disagree with this completely. Like, what's the problem with having the access to both? Um, I get that it's iconic, but I, I don't know. I'm just not... The fantasy of the priest leaping to their target doesn't match our expectations for a priest either. Kind of hard to disagree. Like, they also gave us, like, isn't it like a PvP or like some talent that Holy gets that lets them fly around? Isn't this just a base, like, kind of like that? 
I don't know. I I don't disagree. I don't agree with that at all. And I and I think also like the idea of a leap of faith is literally when someone's like, "Oh, take a leap of faith." It's that person jumping. That's literally what it is. <sighs> so so I, I don't get why they're so headstrong with this and they kind of they, they said that instead they gave us access to body and soul and feather to get extra movement because they think that's what we wanted but in fact that's not true um, there are two different things and I think this is really important there are abilities that increase your movement speed like body and soul like angelic feather and then there are displacement movement abilities this is things like blink alter time uh, demonic circle door of shadows and priest wants that that's why everyone was so excited about the idea of getting vault of the heavens is because it gives us instant displaced movement that is a very unique thing that you would want in certain cases where extra movement speed isn't useful so yeah i i i wholeheartedly disagree with this i think this was an easy dub for them to put in the class tree and i don't agree with the reasoning for this um i think it would be an amazing choice and i think like, sure, a lot of my cases, I would take the one where I leap to someone else. I would take Vault of the Heavens. But a perfect example that literally happened yesterday in my raid, we were re-killing Jailer to get mounts for our group. And our tank was running out to break his chains. And he was like, hey, I really, I would really love a grip here because I have to like walk back to the boss and it takes forever. Boom, Leap of Faith. It was great. He loved it. He's like, oh, thank you. You're the best priest I've ever had in the world like you're no one's better than you it's literally what he said middle of raid um and and like those kind of situations still exist and honestly like having vault of the heavens on jailer like uh you know it's fine i mean you don't need it so i would be fine to take that for him you know so i don't know i'm upset that they they don't think it's good enough for this as a choice so and then moving on Shining Force. The spell was deliberately removed in Dragonflight. Um, I think I will say the fact that Shining Force is a knockback at your current target is a very unique thing in the game. Um, that being said, I'm not sure. Like, I kind of disagreed a little bit with Max on this. Like, I don't know how crazy this was. And maybe it's just a fact of I'm just used to not having it. So it's hard for me to think of scenarios where it's useful. But, like, in my raiding career... I don't think like being able to displace ads like this has always been super, super useful. Um, especially because the targeting is kind of wonky and you can easily f*** it up. So I don't know. I don't, I don't quite agree that it's like as powerful as they say it is. Um, like it's nice. I mean, the, when it's great, don't get me wrong. It's awesome. Like Sanguine Weeks, for example, you use the crap out of this thing, right? Um, but... Yeah, I mean, it's occasionally fine. I don't think it's like the bee's knees or anything. Which is why I was really surprised when they're like, sorry, it's really powerful, you can't have it. I don't know, I also thought this would be an easy thing to put in the tree that a lot of people would find useful. Um, but apparently they think it's game-breaking. I don't know, I, I just don't. And they're saying that, on top of this, the prevalence of knockbacks is already increasing in Dragonflight PvP. This is literally saying, we gave other people knockbacks, so that means we can't give you one. It's just like, what? Really? Thunderstorm. They literally gave every shaman thunderstorm. It's right here. But we can't have it. How dare you also get this thing that you had forever as a holy priest? I don't. This. It just feels so contrary to what they were doing elsewhere, and it just feels like. And this is a pretty small point. Like, I don't think Shining Force is that game-breaking. So, I don't know. I, it's, it's just really... It's it's really upsetting that they that they think this is a good enough reason. I think, like... Sure, you're upset with having too many knockbacks. Okay, what's the concession prize? Right? Like, what are priests getting instead? And right now, the answer is... is You get a five-target route around eight yards. What else we got? We got mass to spell situationally. That's pretty good. Okay. Shackle undead. Rarely that great. Super niche when this is helpful. And just generally worse than everyone else's stuff. Um, oh, can't forget about Leap of Faith. That one's always just great. And uh, twins. Boom. We found the problem. 
we got twins. <laughs> and, and I think what they're doing is they're looking at this and saying, well, we gave you twins, so you get screwed everywhere else. <laughs> um, I don't know. It's, it's, I don't, I don't get it. I, 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 it's, it's hard to really understand where they're coming from, I'll be honest. So, yeah, ex yeah, I don't know. Okay, let's move on. Spectral guys. We read feedback about a desire for the turn of spectral guys. We discussed the ability early on and decided against it. I'm glad that you decided, and our stance has not changed. We do not want priests entering stealth, especially in PvP. Why don't you want us doing it in PvE? What's the big deal? Removes the priest from target frame that occurs frequently. They don't. They they say they they say especially in PvP. Although they don't give a single reason for why it's not why you can't have it in PvE. Makes no sense. Like this is such a this is again. I don't understand why they're making such a big deal out of this because spectral guys was such a small thing. Like it was an open world talent, and like nice when you were resetting a boss. Like what 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 the fuck else did you care about this for? I like I I legit don't like it, it's it's not. Am I missing something? Was this just like wait, what what? Am I missing like how good? Like I I obviously didn't play as much Shadow when this was a thing, um, but I did play it a little bit. I, and I just don't I don't I don't get it. I, I don't I don't get why having this as an option in our talent tree was that big of a deal. Night elves literally have this as a racial. It's been breaking the game in Mythic Plus for you know seasons where people will do shadow meld skips. So like if a rate if it's if a racial has it and everyone can just be that race, then what's the big deal about a class also having it? Okay, this this is a good take. You're saying it's giga broken in PvP and does nothing in PvE. I don't think it does nothing. I think it's flavorful and nice to have an open world, especially. But my, my point is, just saying no to something because it just doesn't work in PvP is not something I like. Like, they could easily say, uh, like, is, is Greater Fade still a thing? No, they got rid of it, right? Like, Greater Fade is just gone now? So they removed Greater Fade. It's not a thing. Greater Fade is gone. So anyone that liked about this in PvP is, like, missing out on Greater Fade. So my, I think, like, what would be cool is, well... Put spectral guys in the tree, but if you're in PvP, it's greater fade instead. I don't, I don't, you, like, I don't care, you know? Like, have it change when you're in PvP, you know? So, I don't know. I thought that was a pretty lame answer. Um, okay, and then moving on, so, Mind Bomb. So, I've been talking about adding Mind Bomb back as the stun version ever since it was removed. Um... They said, in its current form, a disorient, we don't think it is very compelling as a replacement to Psychic Scream. I mean, yep. Yeah. Um, what we anticipate is desired is the AoE stun version of the spell, but we are not planning to bring that forward. We pulled back on AoE stun duration and availability some time ago and decided against adding this one back. Uh, if everyone has an AoE stun, then it's not going to feel special to have one in the first place. Um... I get what they're saying. I really do. I I understand that giving everyone AOE stun is feels bad. They just gave one back to hunters, um, and they they made binding shot now an AOE stun that's actually kind of similar to mind bomb in a lot of ways because it is a delayed AOE stun. Like mind bomb was not just press button get stun, right? It was a two second delayed stun. Um, and I think the biggest reason why I kept asking for this back is because Shadow Priest is desperately missing something that makes it desirable to have in your group. And what I mean by that is, it's the, it's the pug thing, where I want you to be sitting, like, let's say you're you're a, you're doing a 15 key, and you're like, okay, I need a DPS spot for my key. When you get one of everything that signs up, you get five Warlocks, five Mages, and one Shadow Priest, and, and two Ali Shamans, whatever it is, right? You just get a bunch of stuff. To get some rogues in there, get some hunters, lots of hunters and rogues, right? What I want the leader to be like is say like, oh, a shadow priest? Oh, yeah, I would love to have a shadow priest in my group. They give us an AoE stun. It's going to be great for crowd controlling. We also we get we get stamina. But then your healer is like, um, I'm a priest, so we actually already get stamina buff. So in the current spot, shadow's doing nothing. You get an extra PI for your group, but what if you don't have anyone else that likes PI in your group besides the Shadow Priest that you'd be inviting. And so I think Mind Bomb is one of the things, it's a very small point, like it's not game breaking, but I think it gives Shadow something, it's like, man, adding a Priest to my key, cool, we have, we're getting something out of that. 
and it's specifically shadow um specific utility is what i was thinking but they they apparently disagree with that um and i think really what this what i'm trying to say is i think there's a real problem with like utility i've been saying this for years utility balance in mythic plus is overlooked by blizzard and i think for good reasons they care quite a lot about it clearly in pvp at least that's what this post is saying but where is this same motivation to balance utility coming from in pve environments i'm i i don't see it it's not here um I, I need someone at Blizzard to care as much about this problem as I do. Like, I need them to care about spec representation in Mythic Plus is not just a damage problem. And, and I think too often people get into this, like, this balancing thing with Mythic Plus and they just assume that the specs that are being brought to Mythic Plus are being brought just because they do the most damage. Bar none, period. That's the only answer, right? I'll prove you wrong. So this is the sub-creation list. Um, this, this goes off of... Uh, I think it's log, is it log data, Raider IO data? I think this, this perfectly showcases what I'm trying to say is that outlaw rugs, for example, right now, they do not do the top damage in mythic plus outlaw rogues are target capped at five. Some of these dungeons, that's just real bad. <laughs> um, why are outlaw rogues S tier? Why are so many people playing outlaw rogues in mythic plus? It's because they have so much utility. They have gouge, kidney, shroud of concealment. They have so much utility that they're bringing to the group that even though their damage is not as good as survival hunter, they're S tier. And I think that's that's kind of my point. Um, and you can see, like Shadow's up there right now, um, which is, you know, kind of uh, unusual, uh, mostly because this season is kind of weird. Uh, and we do a lot of damage right now, but this is really fluid. Like obviously you're gonna get the meta specs that are gonna pop into the top tier when they do a lot of damage. I think my point is, where is the actual spec specific utility that can kind of transverse that problem? So even if your spec isn't doing top damage, bringing it to a key doesn't feel bad. It doesn't feel like you're being like, wow, I could have brought an Ellie Shaman that does comparable damage but also gives me this utility thing. And I think too often it's just overlooked. And the last thing in here that we'll cover is the bit about personal defenses. So for similar reasons as silence, we'll be, we will not be adding dispersion to the priest class tree. Healing priests are understandable on the weaker side of the defensive spectrum, but our answer to that isn't to bring dispersion to the class tree. And they're basically saying with all the healing and shielding procs that you get, they think that we're in an okay spot. Um, I, it's hard because I, I don't play, I don't heal as much on this, so I don't have like as much of like concrete feedback. But I, I don't know. I still think it's a little disappointing. I mean, like dispersion by itself is kind of a worse version of what some other people already bring. Like, it's not a full immunity like turtle is, but we also can't cast in it right while we're while we're in that form. You know, so like there's a, a heavy downside to that as a spell. Um. And all of these things are like pretty reactive aside from like power word shielding yourself ahead of something happening or translucent image. But even those are like pretty small. Like if you stack power word shield and translucent image, like, you know, you can get like 20% ish effective DR. Um, I don't know. It still feels pretty weak relative to what other classes have. I think desperate prayer specifically could use uh, some buffs. Um, so I don't know. Angelic Bulwark as a talent also feels pretty underwhelming. So, I don't know. Not not a. I don't fully agree with this. I see where they're coming from, but yeah, I think, I don't think it's quite true. So, yeah, power shield being counted as offensive is pretty weird. Although it is a 15 second cooldown now, so it's like a 12 percent of your health when you pop it. So it's definitely a bit beefier than what you have on live, which is why they put it here. Like I understand that because it's, you know, you pop it and that's like 12 percent of your health. Um, as, as an absorb on like a eight second cooldown or something like that. I forget what it is exactly. Maybe it's longer. You, you get my point. It's um, so it is much beefer than it is now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a great point. You, we have to use three abilities to equal one from someone else. I love that. Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't feel great. Doesn't doesn't feel. It doesn't feel polished. You know, just kind of feels a little 
messy. So yeah, okay, let's cover the, the worst part of the post, uh, the stuff about now that the tree has been in front of players for a couple of weeks, we're reasonably happy with what we have. I'm going to stop you right there, bud. Um, yes, we have had the new version of the tree for two weeks, but you've changed it so many times, we just, like still haven't quite played with it yet. If you haven't seen recently, they finished the kind of not yet implemented stuff on the far left side. They changed a bunch of stuff last night that changes pathing and they removed a couple nodes. You know, all of this stuff, right? Um, we really haven't a whole, had a whole lot of time to digest the tree because it's all happening so fast and like, I don't know. It's kind of coming in kind of late. Um, and a lot of this is still bugged. Like the idols still don't all work the way that I think that they should. Um, which makes it kind of hard to like test and see how things are supposed to work. Uh, so yeah, right off the bat, not really agreeing <laughs> Uh, with what they have. Now, shadow orbs are not a work in progress. They, they changed it to be coalescing shadows. Which I'm kind of underwhelmed with in general. But that's okay. Um, okay. Our initial thoughts on void form being optional is something we stand by. How to accomplish this while continuing to support void form and improve on its gameplay is a challenge we want to continue to discuss and work on. So they're acknowledging void form is lame. And it's a hard thing to do. How do you make void form optional without making it uninteresting or critical to the kit? You know, it's a really hard thing, which is why when they initially announced it, I was like, wow, that's a, that's an ambitious goal to have. Let's see if they can pull it off. I'll tell you right now. They haven't, they need, it needs more right now. It needs more, not later, not something you can work on later. Like it needs, it needs to happen before launch or it's not going to land. Currently, we're happy with where we're landed with Void Eruption competing with Dark Ascension, so there's not too many cooldown spells. I agree with this and I disagree with this. I think it was like they made this a choice node. So you now choose Void Eruption or Dark Ascension. I think that's a good start, but you need to define what these playstyles mean. Like, why, why, like, what spec in the game gets to choose their two minute cooldown? You know? That's both terrifying and, and cool. It's terrifying in the sense that right now the cooldowns don't really have that much definition to their playstyles to really distinguish them from each other. You know? So making them a choice node kind of unlocks their ability to do that, but they need to actually do it. Like, what what playstyle is Dark Ascension doing differently than Void Eruption? Right now the answer is kind of not much. Um, and then they go on to say, with that said, Dark Ascension is visually exciting. Sure. We feel it is currently lacking an identity. This is the problem. If you think a talent is there just because it's visually exciting and has no identity, that's a glyph. You just described a glyph. That's a glyph, my dude. A cooldown can't lack identity. If a cooldown lacks identity, why did you put it in the game? <laughs> that's like... A cooldown's purpose is to give you identity. That's literally saying the cooldown doesn't work right now. We're keeping it in the game because the name is familiar to people and it has a good visual. I'm gonna, like, it's not worth it, man. It's not worth it. If that's how you feel about the spell, then just make a glyph that turns Void Eruption's animation into Dark Ascension's wings. And, and this is... I, I, I don't get it. Like, Dark Ascension is not done. It's it's not a finished cooldown. And they're, they're saying, they agree with me. They're saying, we're discussing changes like Dark Ascension being more rotationally transformers while active or having different cooldowns in Void Eruption. So that its use cases over Void Eruption are more clear. Awesome. I'm, I'm super glad that you're discussing this. But it can't go live like this. But despite that, they're saying they don't have plans to make major changes to either spell for Dragonflight launch. But they will be on our radar for the future. This right here, this is... This is wrong, my dude. This is wrong. You can't do this. You... The player base will not let you do this anymore. Like, this is the third or fourth expansion in a row where you basically say, Sorry, we ran out of time. That's not an option. You, you just... You can't do that. You cannot put a half-baked two-minute cooldown into this into the spec and just hope it'll figure itself out and you'll get time to work on it later you you can't do that to us like that's not fair it's just not and i've been really nice about this and i've been very patient 
But this, this is kind of the, this is my line in the sand that's been effectively crossed. If this is how you feel and you've acknowledged that Dark Ascension needs to be more rotationally transformative because it's a fucking two minute cooldown. If that's how you feel, then delete it from the game until it's there. Don't, why did you give it to us if, it, if you knew it wasn't like that yet? If it was just fan service, I'm, I'm giving you permission right now to undo that. It's not too late. It's actually way easier than it was before. Just remove it from the game. Gone. Right? Because I'm telling you right now, if you don't do that, people are going to be very, very upset. They won't, they like, they won't deal with it. Like, it's, that's it. And I say all of that, and Void Eruption has similar problems. He removes Surrender to Madness and Hungering Void, which, to be fair, like, they needed help. Like, if... I agreed with the, the stance of you either iterate on them to make them more exciting or you remove them. And they kind of just kind of gave up. And I think they went with the easy answer. But like you've removed effectively definition from Void Eruption as a cooldown and Void Form as a play style that we've all kind of fell in love with. Or at least a lot of us did in Legion. And most of the remnants of what made that play style fun are nowhere to be seen on a talent tree. You know, like Ancient Madness is not it. This is not it. That's not what I want. You know? Like that void form playstyle is gone. And, you know, it has equally as many problems as this. And that's why, again, I thought it was very ambitious when it first launched. Because they're like, oh, here's a new two-minute cooldown. And then I'm... Like, because on the surface, it's it's exciting to the sense of... If they could have made a talent tree that effectively had two versions of a spec in it... Shadow Priest could do it. You could do it as Shadow. And you could effectively have the Void Eruption side of the tree. Or even just the, that center is like, you know, you pick Void Eruption or Dark Ascension. And all the buttons below them transform based on what that choice was. So if you pick Void Eruption, the four talents in the, underneath of it, you know, change to match the Void Form playstyle. Or you pick the Dark Ascension playstyle and it's totally different. And it plays more like it did in Mop or Kata or whatever else. Right, and you make a you can make a clear definition saying, void eruption is there if you want the void eruption play style to do really really good sustained single target damage over a period of time, and dark ascension does something else. I don't know, you know. But right now it's kind of like, you know, dark ascension empowers your instant cast abilities, and void eruption is more bursty. But it's really not not enough. Yeah, Void Eruption is still a ten extra... So what, what Void Eruption currently gives you is an extra charge of Mind Blast because we don't have that baseline, which is a travesty. You get Void Form um, Mastery's activation. So you get... It assumes you're... It acts like your Mastery's on all targets. Um, you get access to Void Bolt. And you get 10% more damage over Shadow Form. Um, so... Yeah, I can't, I can't iterate, I can't say enough how disappointing and disheartening it is. This feels, this feels like a giant slap in the face to all the work that we've been doing over the last couple, couple months and years even. Because th this exact statement, I feel like I've read this five times in my life. The Shadowlands rework came at the very last second. They're like, sorry, we we couldn't finish it. Here's what, here's what we have left. Like I quit. BFA, same problem. Legion, they had to do it mid-expansion. Yeah, super disappointing. And and I and I don't think I'm being unreasonable here. I really don't. I really don't think I am. And I understand like specs change from expansion to expansion. That's fine. It's not fine to keep doing it and keep unfinishing it. And then every expansion, you turn around and you go in a different direction. It's not fine. It's just not. You're just, you're you're pissing off people. That's what you're doing. Okay, the last thing they said in the post is Mind Spike and Mind Flay coexisting is something we're going to try, but are wary of. Shout out as many spells to press rotationally, as they've already acknowledged, and this isn't helping that. At the same time, being able to build your own Shadow Priest was a goal with this iteration, and we believe the tree allows for that. I'm going to stop you right there. That's really not true. Um... This need this is not finished. I understand they're saying that they're wary of it. I'm telling you right now, it's not going to work. Um, it's all it's already kind of broken. 
Okay, I understand that it's early for numbers and they can fix this, but this is this is the problem. So they changed Mind Spike. So Mind Spike no longer removes dots baseline. Okay, so this means you can just sit there and just spam Mind Spike and you're fine. Like that can be your new filler. Um, this has a lot. This has a couple of implications of this. The first one being, well, then what the hell is the point of Mind Flay? Um, and if we just look at the baseline numbers of where they're at now, and this is assuming, you know, everything will scale with mastery, haste, etc. Similarly, obviously that's a large assumption, but you get my point. Um, these are currently the values for the two spells. Um, and you can see they both give the same insanity per second, but spell power is significantly in Mind Spike's favor. And... You know, sure, they could change these values around. But right now, it's kind of a math thing of which one you press. And one of them is an in is a casted hit. The other one is a casted tick. Obviously, that distinction is only important for Dark Ascension and Dark Evangelism, which are buffing dots or hard-casted spells. The problem, though, that's just such a small distinction, and it's an optional talent Uh so you need to understand, the, the, the problem I have with this, put it simply, is you need to go read my guide or look at a sim to know what your filler is. It's not intuitive. It should be very clear to the player without looking at any numbers why they should want to press Mind Flay or Mind Spike. And right now that's untrue. Because there are certainly cases right now where you talent into Mind Spike and you could go all ham into here where you're basically like, yep, I'm gonna pick Mind Spike I'm going to pick all this stuff. I'm even going to pick Dark Ascension. Um, I got to pick other stuff to move on. You know, I'm going to pick all the Mind Spike buffing stuff in the world. You know? But, this doesn't mean you always press Mind Spike. Mind Flay is still a valid thing to press. The problem is, do you guys know when that is? I don't know. <laughs> um, because you, you Mental Decay is in here, which is saying... While flaying, your dots are extended. So you, you can't just throw that away. I mean, I guess you could not take it. But, like, do you know when or not you should? And what about Dark Evangelism? Should you still keep up Dark Evangelism stacks? Okay, well, now you have to weave in Mind Flay to, to maintain this maintenance buff. Okay, what about Mind Flay Insanity? Which doesn't work with Mind Spike. I mean, clearly, it's called Mind Flay. So I, I, it's not intuitive, like, when this works or the other. And, and I think I understand that they're trying to give us build diversity, but it's actually just making it way more confusing and frustrating because it's not clear. The, what, what I liked about Mind Spike removing our dots is it, it made it so it was only something you press when you have a Surge of Darkness proc. And effectively just added a new button into our kit that we could do with that proc. And they, they added a little bit of a gameplay loop with that and Mind Blast. And there was something kind of developing with that. But it's not elegant. And it's not clear to the player what you're doing when you're making your build. And those consequences it would have. Um, I think, and I'll, I'll pull up my thoughts on this. I did make a forum post about this specifically um, this morning. So here, here are two options for this. If they want to keep Mind Spike and Mind Flay in a world together. They could... Have Mind Spike just straight up replace Mind Flay when talented into it. And just be like, cool, if you want to go the Mind Spike playstyle, that's your new filler. Congratulations. Um, to do that, they would have to change all of the existing talents that work with Mind Flay to instead be Mind Spike and Mind Flay. Um, which I think is easy enough for things like Mental Decay. Um, it's a way, like, um, it doesn't work with Monomania, so they'd have to change Monomania for that. Or just remove Monomania. Um, Mind Flay and Sanity, I think, could still work. But, I mean, yeah, they'd have to check. And I think that could actually be more fun. Because then you would be kind of... They'd have to tune it so close. Yeah, I mean, maybe. I'm just I'm just kind of pointing out, like, that's an, that's an option. The other one, which I, th I think I like better... Oh, the, the thing about doing this, if they did this, this does severely reduce our button bloat. Which is something they are concerned about. Because having Flay and Spike... Casting both at different times, right? Like, you know that that can be that can be harder. Um, 
and yeah. So the other option, I think I like this option more, but obviously I'm not a designer. I'm just like talking out my butt a little bit. Um, add the baseline dot removal back into mind spike, but then have dark ascension transform mind spike to no longer remove dots. So basically only conditionally remove dots when dark ascension is active. That way mind spike is pressed when you have a surge of darkness proc or you're inside of dark ascension. Um, and I think that's a much better spot. I, I, that's my point. I, I think these are my, I would love to see them consider one or both of these. So we'll see. Obviously this depends heavily on what they do with dark ascension, which has its own problems, but yeah. Yeah. And that's, th this is the other big point. The tree is unfinished. The tree has problems. The tree has bugs and the tree is still not clear making a build. It's getting better. I don't like, don't get me wrong. Like they are making improvements into the tree. It doesn't feel satisfying and it doesn't feel finished. Um, and it's really hard to judge because of those problems. Um, I made another post today and this is probably all I really have time left. Um, cause they did make a lot of changes. So, and this is me reacting to those changes, um, in this thread. Um, and this is kind of a little bit of like what's left or what's kind of currently outstanding, but this kind of sums up my thoughts. I did a little bit on like the class tree in here. Um, shadow tree, you know, you know, we're getting there. Um, I talked about mind spike. I think mind seer needs some help. I think mind seer doesn't feel like it's quite finished yet. And I think it still has some issues. Um, go over that here. So yeah. Um, obviously I only, I have three minutes until raid, so I can't quite cover all of this right now, but yeah, this is kind of where I stand on those thoughts. Um, but the point is, you know, and I did a, I did a section on things that haven't changed yet. You know, idle spells, dark void is still a problem. There's a lot of, there's still utility options in the spec tree. Um, AOE definition is lacking, you know, like these are still problems that need to be worked on. And that's why I'm really concerned about like the, the points brought up in this blue post or the new from the changes they just had last night, like they're solving some problems, but they're also introducing others. So the fact that we're kind of giving a hint that they're like, yeah, sorry guys, we don't have time to fix things before the launch of Dragonflight. It's just terrifying, you know?